Oh, yep, look at that. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Really quick, I wanted to start this off by saying we're going to be talking about duck smoke detectors in this video. I actually just created a new uh, how duck detectors work video. So if you guys need an understanding on duck smoke detectors, do me a favor and watch the video first. I'll be popping it up in the card right now in the top of the screen. All right, we have a, kind of a multiple service call today. The customer called and said that they've got a duck detector or a test and reset station in their office that has a red light on it, which is essentially a remote test and reset station for a duck detector. There's actually a duck detector right there. That's one of them. But so they think they have an AC that's not working and they also have kind of like a, a sewage smell, they think, and they think their building might be negative, meaning the, the exhaust fans are pulling too much air and put, not putting enough makeup air back in the building. Whether any of that is the actual case, I don't know. We're going to dive into this and we're going to see what we can find. Again, because I don't completely understand what's going on, I'm starting at every AC, looking to see if we have a digital display on the Prodigy board and going through that first to see if we have any indication of duct detectors trip. So far, none. Also, I went through to every exhaust fan, made sure that they were all running. I have not checked the makeup air units yet. All of these units are rather new, so it's really easy just to go to the Prodigy board and see that you have a display. Now, duct detectors, I can tell you just from experience, these duct detectors are located inside the unit, but gotta be careful here. A lot of these units have been changed and the installing contractor, just cause I know it's not me, but the installing contractor left the existing duct detectors in the duct work and controlling the thermostats. So these units potentially have double smoke detectors. So you see there's one right there. Now, just because a duct detector is there doesn't mean it's hooked up, but from looking at these ACs, I can tell you, see how this one has a duct detector here too. This one is controlling the Prodigy board. That one theoretically is controlling the thermostat. Now I can tell you that every one of these units has got power to the Prodigy board and there's no duct detector trip signal going to any of them. So that tells me, but yet we have a blank thermostat downstairs and we have a, a test and reset station light illuminated, basically telling us that we have a trip duct detector. So that confirms my suspicion that the installing contractor that did these ACs left the existing duct detectors controlling the thermostats. So that means that we're going to have duct detectors down below the roof deck in the actual duct work and we got to figure out where that problem's at. All right, I started by going to every AC, make sure the belts are relatively tight. I mean, I didn't check proper tension, but just to make sure the belts were there, nothing was frozen up, nothing was stuck as far as blower motors or anything like that. I don't want to reset a duct detector downstairs if there's potentially a bad motor, right? So I did everything I could just to test them, checked every AC. Um, most of them actually the blowers are running except for a few. Now the AC that is labeled that is down is AC1. I, I'm assuming that's this one right here, but I don't know for sure because I don't know if the labeling's correct. So we're going to go downstairs and attempt to reset this test and reset station and see what happens. The other thing I also did was went to every makeup air unit, made sure they were running, they are. And it, like I already said, I made sure every exhaust fan is running. So once I get all the ACs running, we'll check the air balance um, and get the outdoor air fan or outdoor air dampers opening up. We'll check the balance and see if there's an issue with that. Um, but we were just doing kind of preliminary checks before we reset a duct detector. This is my test and reset station and nothing's happening when I turn it. So. We gotta go up to the duct detector. Either this is bad or there's a problem with the duct detector. We'll find out in a minute. This duct detector is supposed to be water resistant, but I already see a problem. There's supposed to be a rubber gasket right here. And uh, this is the test and reset station. That rubber gasket isn't there. I've had many times where I open these waterproof outdoor detectors up, and this one also has heat cracks all over it, and they're full of water. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if that's our situation here. Um, before I started anything, I went ahead and had the manager call their fire alarm company and put the system on test. 
And then I also instructed her that she may have to reset the fire alarm because oftentimes, depending on how these detectors are wired up, it can set off the fire alarm. Um, sometimes they just send a trouble signal. Sometimes they turn on the enunciators. Yep, and I can see water damage inside here all over the place. We have a red LED light for a trip detector right now, and we definitely have water damage. Let's go ahead and open up the, the sensor cabinet and see what happened in here. Oh, yep, look at that. Go figure. That's gonna be our problem. Full of water. Okay, so we gotta figure out a way to reset this guy, get it operating. Um, like I said, there's redundant smoke detectors. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna recommend that uh, we use the smoke detectors in the RTU unit and we wire up the fire alarm to those. In fact, I can probably do that today. Uh, let's see. We'll see. Let me see what I can figure out. Right now, I need to work on bypassing this duct detector. Uh, we know that's an issue. <laughs> that was funny. All the fucking water comes out. All right. So what we need to do is figure out which wires are which, and then we'll go from there. So from the looks of it, the aux A is going to be my uh, thermostat. Normally closed and common. That's how they turn off the thermostat. And then we have an alarm contact over here. This thing is wired up for a trouble condition. Uh, so we've got the alarm contact over here on the right hand side. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with these smoke detectors, so I kind of know what's going on here. Let's go ahead and test. Uh, we do not have 24 volts coming into the detector. Who knows what's going on, man? They got all kinds of crap tripped. Essentially, if I jump these two together, we should be able to turn my alarm, I mean my uh, thermostat back on. So if we test these bad boys, I think that's my 20, yeah, there's my 24 volts to ground, and this should be getting 24 volts. So if we put these two together, we should have a thermostat operating. So now we should have a thermostat, I would think, and then the rest of this is just going to be test and reset stations, and then we have an alarm contact right here. So we have another smoke detector right here, so you know that this one has the black cap. Let's see what's going on in this one. This should be wired in series with the other one or tied in together, I guess. What you could say. Looks like water damage in this one too. Not like the other one though. Yeah though, there's lots of condensation in here too. That's not good. There's our resistor, end of line resistor right there. This basically proves the circuit. So I'm trying to make sense of this, and from the looks of it, we have, looks like an enunciator right here, I bet. Going to a, 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 a horn, basically, in our alarm, is my assumption. And then we have one alarm wire coming up, going into the detector, one alarm wire coming out of that detector, going to the other detector. That's happening right here. So each detector should have um, a test and reset station wire. So you need the test and reset station. And then you have an alarm main wire and then it's gonna tie the detectors together. And then there's an end of line resistor that we showed over there. So I could make this work um, and wire it into the unit. It's just a matter of uh, do I have all the materials to do the, 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 the conversion. And I might need to quote this too because the new duct detectors that are in the unit, the test and reset stations that are downstairs might not work with those. So I might have to, uh, let's see, I'll have to figure that out. I might have to bypass, well right now I have the detector running and remember we still have the smoke detectors in these units. So we have redundant detectors here. So it's not like we're, we're cutting out a safety. We're still going to have the safety in there. So, all right, well, I got to think about this for a minute and decide what I'm going to do. All right, we still have a uh, test and reset station that's triggered, but now we have a display on the thermostat. So I bypassed it and got the thermostat running. 
now I've got to figure out how to turn off the alarm because right now it's signaling a, uh, a fire condition to their fire alarm. So I got to do that too and figure that problem out. Obviously the detector is going to need to be bypassed, like I said, or hooked up to the new detectors. When it comes to smoke detectors, sometimes they can be a little confusing because you have so many jackets of wire coming up. It's always pretty safe to assume that if you have a red jacket, it has something to do with the duct detector or the fire alarm system. The way that I like to break down duct detectors is just look at the wires and typically, typically you will use a single jacketed wire for one function. Not always, but typically, okay? So in this function right here, this red jacket is going strictly to the test and reset station. It's using four wires and that test and reset station requires four wires. So we can mark this test and reset, like label it number one and then figure out, you know, write what colors go to what, and we can completely unwire this and then be able to figure everything out. That's how I break them down. And it makes a lot more sense that way. Then I can look at the next jacket and I can say this back jacket right here, there's one going to the power source and then they're going to the alarm contact. So this is actually this jacket right here that my finger's touching back here is the fire alarm company's wiring and they're landing right here and right here. And then it looks like it's running over to the other detector because the end of line resistor's over there. And then the last jacket looks like power, maybe for the other duct detector, because we've got, we've got a power source coming in. We have two reds and two blacks, which means that one detector is more than likely powering the other detector. So when you break it down that way, it really makes these things make more sense and it makes it a lot less confusing. What I'm doing is I labeled each jacket, jacket one with one hash, chat, hash mark, two and three, and I'm gonna unwire them systematically and then figure out what's going on. And what I'm gonna end up doing is temporarily running the alarm contacts over to the RTU unit. So that way we have a functioning duct detector that signals the fire alarm company. And then we'll quote to come back and do it permanently. So I'm gonna use their existing conduit. It won't look pretty, but it'll be something and then we'll come back and put a new test and reset station. So for now, I'm actually gonna unwire the test and reset station. So that way we have a functioning duct detector that actually signals the alarm company. You can see what I'm talking about. So I broke it down, jacket number two, essentially was power to the detector and the alarm contact, and jacket three was also power to the detector and the alarm contact. So my assumption, just from looking at this, is, is one of these is just jumping over to the other unit. Um, now, once I eliminated those wires and marked them so I knew what they went to, we only have four wires left. These two aren't hooked up. That's just your test and reset station. So see, these detectors really aren't that bad when you break them down like that. Now, once I've identified which ones are which, I pulled it away from there, I'm identifying them in this junction box and I'm gonna end up cutting them. So what I found is, is that uh, three, I believe to be, uh, well, anyways, I don't remember what three is, but I'm just identifying, I'm gonna cut them, wire nut them over here, so that way I can run a new wire directly into the RTU uh, duct detector. All right, so I've completely disconnected the other detector. Oh yeah, and this, this speaker wire, enunciator wire, it wasn't going to anything. I traced it all the way over to the old fire alarm enunciator on the outside of the building. It was just the audible speaker, and it was just laying on the ground. So I went ahead and disconnected that. So now we got, essentially, if you break it down in its simplest terms, you have one jacket coming up that's going to the fire alarm panel that's it and you have one jacket going to each test and reset station that's that's all we got and then everything else was happening in the detectors so what i'm going to try to do is i'm trying to harvest the red jacketed wire and if i have one that's long enough i'll use it to run in that conduit right there that goes directly to the ac we'll use that temporarily we'll bring it right to here and then we'll hook this thing up. We may not even have to come back, to be honest with you, if I get it all set up right. All right, I'm not gonna say who the installation co or installing contractor of these units is. You guys know who you are, because you watch my videos. It's kind of ridiculous. So I'm checking out this thermostat wire going from the duct detectors. And look at these guys. They just shoved it into a hole in the freaking ductwork and are just running it through the unit. Come on, guys. So if you look over here, look at this. The wire's just sitting there, and I'm like, where's that coming from? Just sitting there going. Look, I'm not perfect, and I make mistakes, but come on, guys. That's ridiculous. All right, um, 
I've got the new conduit. I was able to use the old conduit. And if you guys didn't already know, you can use, I mean, again, I didn't mean to bash the other guys, but it's kind of frustrating when they do shady stuff like that, okay? But I'm gonna point out a little tip. These Linux units, they have a perfect chase to run conduit in. It secures the conduit nice and sturdy. Look at that. So anyways, I've got my new wire ran, okay? They never even, the installing contractor never even started up this unit properly. The duct detector's never been put into operation. And for the protection of the installing contractor, I took their sticker off, but the red dust caps are still on there. So this duct detector's never even done anything, but we're gonna do an, a startup on this thing. So I'm getting ready. Um, I've got my wires ran coming into here. I, I pulled two thermostat wires through and I marked them before I pulled them. So that way I knew which one's gonna be the test and reset station, which one's gonna be the, uh, the alarm contact. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to utilize the existing test and reset station if I can. So that's why I pulled the, con the wire. So when doing an initial startup on these guys, you've got to remove these red plugs. These units have been operating for like two years now or a year now, but yeah, whatever. You got to remove those red plugs because that's what forces the air through the duct detector sensor. With those in there, these duct detectors aren't doing anything. So this guy won't reset from the, uh, the test and reset station. So I happen to have one of these in the van. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it real quick. All right, so here's a new one. This one doesn't use a key, but you can see you, you use a magnet and then you use a button push to reset it. So this one's working, but we need to make sure that it's actually transferring up to the roof. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in an alarm condition and then we'll go up there and make sure the duct detector's tripped up there. So I come up to the roof and we're tripped on the Prodigy board smoke detector and we're tripped on the red LED. Hit that button and it resets. So we now have a correct test and reset function. Now, last step, I need to hook up the fire alarm. Now, I disconnected the fire alarm through my testing just because I didn't want to set off the fire alarm. Um, the fire alarm is simply a contact with a resistor. Now, this resistor is an end of line resistor. This just proves that there's nothing wrong between these two wires. It's a proving circuit. That's all it's doing. It's telling the alarm company that they have a good set of wires and uh, if they get a direct short across the wires, it says there's a fire. If this resistor disappears, it signals a trouble condition, meaning that, hey, maybe a mouse came up and ate a wire or maybe something got severed. And it's warning them that if there's a fire, you're not necessarily gonna get a fire alarm condition because there's a problem with this circuit right here between these two wires. So this is just an end of line resistor to prove the circuit. So what I need to do now is get the manager involved, uh, put the alarm back on here, and then we're gonna trigger it from downstairs, make sure that we get an alarm condition, make sure that it resets, and then we're gonna call the fire alarm company and walk through all these steps with them too, triggering a fire alarm condition and resetting it to make sure that the circuit is all connected correctly and everything is good to go. Now this happened because I broke the circuit. I pulled that resistor out and they got a trouble condition. So we're gonna silence it, reset it, and then uh, we're gonna call the alarm company and go through the setup right now. All right, I don't have any sheet metal to cover up the old hole for the duct detector. So I left the duct detector there, cleaned up all my messes. I still need to get a cap for that J box. I'm gonna bring it up right now. And then, uh, yeah, same thing on the other side. Don't have a cap. I mean, I'm sorry, don't have a sheet metal for the duct detector, so it's just there. But I picked up all my messes. Um, these drives me nuts, but they have a filter changing company and they always take out the dang filter pullers. Um, all the AC units I went through and adjusted the uh, outdoor air dampers um, for building air balance. Building air balance is much better now, now that the ACs are working. And then also went and programmed all their thermostats to run the fans continuously when they're in the occupied mode. Set all that back up. Um, everything else is working. Make repairs are all working. Exhaust fans are working. So. This one's good to go. As far as where the smell was coming from, it's possible that the AC not working and then the other AC is not being programmed right was causing the building to be negative air balance. Um, I'm not seeing the problem right now. So we'll just tell them to keep an eye on it. They also have some other issues that they want me to address. They need a door closure on their walk-in cooler. So I will be back within the next week and I'll follow up with them. But yeah, that's pretty much it on this one. We had to take this call one step at a time. 
the initial thing was they had a, a test and reset station that had a red LED light on it. They had a blank thermostat. They thought they had a funny smell in the restaurant. On a side note, I never really found the funny smell, but I did end up adjusting the air balance, which more than likely was the source of the smell. If the building's uh, air balance is negative, then um, the exhaust fans, the negative suction pull on the building can start to pull things from weird locations. It can dry out pee traps. It can do all kinds of stuff. So it can pull smells from weird places. So um, that was my best logical guess on what potentially the smell could have been, but the smell wasn't there when I was there. Okay. So anyways, back to the call, I took it one step at a time. I tried to walk you guys through the whole thought process of where I was going with everything. I do have to say that you need to be very, very careful in certain places and certain municipalities. Duck smoke detectors can be considered a life safety device. So you need to be cautious, know what you're allowed to work on. Don't get involved in something that you can get in trouble for working on. Okay. In my area, I am allowed to work on duck smoke detectors. My insurance company covers me on it. And, uh, the, the fire alarm company oftentimes won't touch them. Um, if there's an electrical issue within the duck smoke detector, the fire alarm company and myself usually show up and troubleshoot it together. Anyways, we went through this step by step. Okay. Um, I took, uh, I made some assumptions based off of experience, like having an idea that that duck detector might've been full of water, you know, but I tried to make the best logical decisions. I tried to eliminate a second visit and I did because I was able to go ahead and utilize everything. Okay. Um, you know, as far as talking about the contractor, how they ran that conduit, I, I kind of felt a little bad for bringing it up, but I left it in the video because genuinely that is the incorrect way to run a conduit. You don't just push it in through the ductwork and then just leave it dangling, you know, through metal pieces inside the unit. That's just kind of silly. Okay. But it is what it is. I've made mistakes probably similar or worse than that in my career. Um, you know, we just got to understand that everybody makes those mistakes, okay? Just because I vented my frustration at the particular contractor doesn't mean that I feel like I'm any better than them. I've made mistakes just like that, but it just pisses me off, you know? It is what it is, you know, just it's there. So hopefully you guys understand the sequence of operation of these duck detectors. Um, I've also just created another video with the whole breaking down of the duck detectors. Uh, I said in the beginning of this video, but you know, hopefully you guys can watch that if you want a little bit more of an understanding of how these duck detectors work. Okay. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Do me a favor, leave me a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, whatever you feel necessary. Um, I do live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time where I discuss these videos, work permitting, of course. Um, please come check them out. And that's going to wrap this one up. Okay, I really appreciate it. And we will catch you guys on the next one.